can approach uh, marking uh, points of the apparent change in slope in the uh, in the uh, stress strain curve, and from there I was able to um, uh, develop relationships uh, that. Uh, limits the ultimate strain at the end of 0.013, although some specimens reach a higher strain than that. And also the effect of the fiber is um, uh, accounted for in this uh, model uh, using a factor alpha. And I applied the, the, uh, the model to the other two fiber contents that were um, from this study and the uh, model um, uh, and the model had uh, Good, good results compared to compares compared to the um, experimental. As for the uh, direct tension, ultra high performance fiber force concrete is uh, exhibits a behavior that is completely different than the uh, normal strength concrete and uh, high strength concrete uh, in terms of uh, the phases that the material passes through. So it has an elastic uh, phase uh, up to the el elastic limit of the material, and then a strain hardening, multi cracking uh, phase. Uh, up to the localization or uh, up to the crack localization, and then a strain softening phase. So in the elastic phase, the the uh, or the pre-localization phase, a strain definition of the material is uh, acceptable. However, in the post-localization, crack opening displacement is uh, more representative, and strain definition is no longer accepted. And that's why several researchers uh, started uh, applying direct tensile tests on the material. Um, uh, in a biphase uh, form uh, and uh, representing the, the results as a strain definition for the pre-localization and crack opening displacement for post-localization. Uh, uh, as uh, for the research uh, that was conducted in the Czech University in Prague, they um, they they used the um, standard dog bone uh, unnotched specimens in a specially designed drips to avoid the strain stress localization and the grip problems in direct tension test. And they apply, they um, presented the uh, data in the uh, biphase form, and uh, they conducted the uh, test on uh, using four fiber contents, starting from zero, uh, one, two, and three uh, uh, percent of fiber. And I used their post uh, peak or post localization uh, part to uh, develop the model for the uh, strain softening part of the um, ultra high performance fiber and force concrete for 2%. And then I applied the model on the 1 and 3% ratios and it yielded good results. The model takes into account the uh, fracture energy of the material as well as the characteristic length, which is equivalent to the fiber length, and also takes into consideration the uh, tensile strength of the material. And this is a compiled view of the developed uh, procedure model. Now for the experimental investigation. Uh, as mentioned, I have uh, two main uh, investigations, the static load uh, uh, testing program and the blast load. For the static load, I had five specimens of ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete. Two of them are un uh, with no steel reinforcement and two of and the, the second two specimens are with 1% uh, steel reinforcement and two, two different fiber contents. And the final specimen uh, had 2% fiber, 2% steel reinforcement. The same uh, five specimens were replicated in the blast uh, load uh, shock tube testing. Uh, and in addition to that, I had two um, uh, traditional concrete specimens for uh, reference and comparison purposes. Um, all the specimens are in this, uh, of the same uh, planar dimension of 2.44 by 0.44 meters and the uh, constant thickness of 100 millimeter and the reinforcement ratio, uh, the top and the bottom ratios are the same. Um, I also conducted a material characterization testing to uh, obtain the material properties for, uh, in terms of compression of strength, specific tensile strength and flexure strength of ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete and the two other uh, concretes that I used. Now for the reference static four point load testing, it's a simply supported um, test setup uh, and the data uh, acquired were the uh, uh, displacement at the two uh, third points and the uh, mid span. Uh, also, the support rotation uh, were acquired using uh, two tilt meters and the rebar strains using two strain gauges at the mid span of the middle two bars. As for the um, all the specimens were tested in an incremental loading uh, um, uh, manner till failure, and uh, all the five specimens failed in a tensile flexural uh, mode, uh, with the uh, reinforced specimens uh, experienced a uh, steel yielding as a dominant uh, failure. Uh, form. Now for the uh, 
among the data acquired uh, from the test, it's important to highlight the uh, load versus uh, mid-span def deflection uh, um, uh, uh, data here. And as we can see, the uh, bottom curve here is for the unreinforced ultra-high-performance fiber-reinforced concrete with 2% uh, fibers. Uh, and as we increase the content to 3%, we can see a major uh, enhancement to the energy absorption and the capacity uh, properties, as well as the stiffness of the material. Uh, when the uh, steel content, uh, when the sorry, when the steel reinforcement bars are introduced at 1%, uh, we can say see, see a, a um, even um, more enhancement to the capacity, to the energy absorption, and the stiffness. And when the uh, reinforcement uh, ratio was increased to 2%, uh, even more and more enhancement to the uh, overall performance uh, can be observed. And this the, the, this test this um, data or this loop uh, the, uh, displacement curve was used uh, to conduct the uh, preliminary sem single degree freedom analysis for uh, to obtain the shock tube testing uh, results uh, sorry uh, load for the uh, shock tube testing group. As for the shock tube testing uh, conducted at the University of Ottawa, uh, the shock tube. Uh, is a blast simulator device with uh, five uh, segments, the variable length driver where uh, air is uh, stored under, uh, or the compressed air is uh, stored under a spe specified pressure, and the diaphragm uh, segment which acts as a trigger mechanism for the um, uh, blast load. And uh, once the diagram is def the diaphragm is deflated, the uh, um, released air passes through the expansion chamber uh, till it reaches the rigid diaphragm where the pressure sensors are attached. The uh, load transfer device is also attached to the rigid diaphragm and the um, specimen and the boundary condition. For the data acquisition system, I had one LVTD at the uh, mid-span location and also uh, two high-speed cameras to, uh, use, to be used for digital image correlation as well as two string gauges at the middle two bars. Uh, the pressure was... Uh, uh, generated from a six feet uh, uh, driver, which is approximately 1.8 uh, meters uh, at four different uh, driver pressures. And the um, parameters investigated were the uh, concrete type, normal strength, high strength, and ultra high performance. The steel enforcement ratio is 0, 1, and 2%, and the fiber ratio of 2 and 3%, as well as the effect of the load intensity on the performance of the panel. Uh, as for the results, under the first uh, 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 shot of the um, test, we can see that uh, normal, uh, traditional concrete experienced higher level of deformation and uh, damage compared to the ultra high performance fiber force concrete panel with 1% reinforcement, 2% fiber. However, uh, uh, a smaller damage zone and uh, localization was observed. But when the fiber content of the ultra high performance concrete was in, uh, increased to 3%, um, better damage distribution and uh, lesser deformation. And as for the uh, last specimen here with 2% uh, fiber, 2% reinforcement, and even better uh, enhancement in the uh, performance was observed. As for the second shot, the two traditional concrete specimens failed under compression, fail con con compression controlled failure mode and uh, with the lots of fragmentation. The ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete uh, specimen with 1% uh, fiber, 1% uh, reinforcement, 2% fiber experienced an undesired, undesired uh, brittle uh, uh, form of failure with the bar rupture and uh, higher displacement. Uh, but this, when the uh, fiber content was increased to 3%, the uh, same bar rupture was experienced, but with um, less violent uh, type of failure and uh, and uh, a better uh, ductility. Uh, and for the last specimen with 2% steel reinforcement, an even better performance was observed and the specimen lasted for one extra uh, shot of load. Uh, in terms of the displacement and support rotation, as we mentioned, the uh, traditional concrete had the higher uh, residual and maximum displacements. Uh, the ultra high performance fiber force concrete with 2% fiber uh, showed up an improvement in both the residual and the maximum displacement, and the specimens with higher fiber content or higher steel ratio uh, experienced almost the same uh, behavior with a better, uh, with an improved uh, improvement in the displacement. And the same, um, the same observation can be applied uh, uh, to the uh, support rotation as well. In terms of fragmentation. The uh, traditional concrete specimens uh, produced around six kilograms of fragments of different size fragments, while the uh, ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete at maximum produced 60 grams of fine powder. 
uh, in terms of damage distribution and crack, displace, uh, crack spacing, the traditional concrete experienced higher damage and, high, uh, and higher level of fragmentation and a, a bigger damage zone compared to the ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete with 1% reinforcement, 2% fiber, uh, experienced almost a, a, a small damage zone with um, higher crack spacing uh, compared to uh, the specimen with higher fiber content, a better damage distribution uh, and the lesser crack spacing was observed. And when the steel reinforcement ratio was increased to 2% and even better damage distribution was observed with a smaller crack spacing. Now we come to the numerical investigation. Uh, uh, the finite element uh, model was uh, built in, uh, in, inside the um, Abacus using Abacus plat platform and was validated uh, using uh, my shock tube uh, testing results, as well as field blast data from uh, uh, research conducted in Korea in 2012 and a joint research between uh, UK and Australian uh, research teams. Um, and uh, the material uh, properties reported were used to uh, uh, build the uh, material model uh, using the procedure model that I developed in this uh, study. And uh, the models were then uh, built into Abacus software with the same uh, geometry and boundary condition of the uh, test were uh, constructed inside the Abacus uh, platform. As for the model validation number one, which is the shock tube testing, I used three of my specimens to conduct this validation. Uh, two identical specimens uh, at different uh, shock tube load and the last specimen with an increased reinforcement ratio. And the load was applied uh, in a, a, as an idealized uh, pressure uh, versus time um, uh, tabulated in a tabulated form in, in, inside the Abacus software. And as you can see, the uh, numerical damage pattern uh, observed was um, uh, was able to represent the damage, uh, the crack pattern uh, observed experimentally, and also the model to test ratio for the mid-span deflection uh, was within a ratio of uh, 0.95, which is uh, a pretty good um, uh, ratio. And then for the second uh, validation field blast testing from the Korean um, experimental test, the uh, specimen was one meter by one meter by one point by 150 millimeter in thickness, unreinforced with fixed boundary condition, tested under 15 kilogram of TNT at a uh, 1.5 meter. And the uh, load was uh, applied uh, in the Abacus software using the uh, built-in Conweb module. And as we can see, the damage pattern and the uh, and the crack uh, experimental crack pattern um, uh, are uh, close to each other, and, and, and the numerical was representative of the experimental, as well as the this mid-span displacement. Uh, the model test ratio was uh, around 0.88. Uh, as for the final uh, validation uh, for the joint research of the UK and Australian teams, two, two panels were um, uh, investigated or used in this uh, um, uh, validation. Uh, identical reinforcement, identical in uh, fiber content and uh, dimensions simply supported under 100 kilogram of TNT. And uh, the difference is the stand of distance and the model to test ratio for the mid-span displacement was 0.98. Uh, which is a good ratio. Uh, for the three tests, the average uh, model to test ratio was 0.94. For the final uh, investigation in this study, which is the numerical investigation, uh, the purpose of this uh, part of the investigation is to, uh, sorry, the numerical design optimization, the purpose of this uh, study is to uh, illustrate how the developed material model and the uh, finite element uh, modeling approach uh, uh, developed in this study um, can be used to solve real design problems. Uh, so the scenario that is um, uh, used here is that uh, we have a structure that needs protection against the blast hazard. Uh, so the, uh, ideally the first uh, uh, level of protection is to restrict the access to the building at a certain distance and we use this as our stand of distance. And then the second level of protection would be the application of the precast protection panels. Uh, and from this scenario, I applied two uh, numerical studies. First one is a geometric design optimization to optimize the thickness of the panel, the reinforcement ratio, the aspect ratio, which is the, uh, the side length ratio, using a fixed boundary condition. And then I used the optimum uh, panel design to conduct uh, uh, an, another, um, the second uh, numerical study uh, for the effect of the boundary condition. 
the load, the blast load environment used uh, was a, a, a charge of 460 kilograms of TNT at a stand of distance of six meters. And according to the Federal Emergency uh, Management Administration, um, uh, this, this is categorized as the threshold that would cause column failure. And according to the Canadian Standard Association, it's classified as a class B4, which would result in a hazardous failure to the structure. Uh, for the design optimization study, four uh, different aspect ratios were investigated, and in total, 150 simulations were uh, conducted. And the results were uh, presented in terms of displacement versus thickness, and the optimum range was um, chosen to be uh, where the, the curve start to reach a plateau or converge, as we can say. And uh, this is a view, uh, an example of the damage patterns ob uh, obtained from the uh, software, and uh, it matches the uh, expected damage pattern of one-way or two-way slab uh, type of system. Uh, as for the uh, second investigation, the effect of boundary condition, uh, nine uh, different boundary condition scenarios were uh, 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 investigated. And uh, the results were uh, presented, uh, or the uh, the parameters investigated were the maximum displacement and the uh, maximum support rotation, uh, as per the uh, requirements of the Canadian standards. And the damage obtained also matches the ex expected um, damage of or crack pattern in one way and two way slab. Uh, sorry, in a two way slab, uh, with respect to its boundary condition, of course. Uh, in conclusion. Uh, for the experimental testing, uh, using ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete for blast protection panels enhances overall performance uh, compared to uh, traditional concrete. And increasing the steel reinforcement ratio yields uh, more significant enhancement to the overall uh, performance uh, than increasing the fiber content. And increasing the fiber content enhances the ductility and failure mode of the panel. Um, also, uh, ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete uh, tend to experience uh, more localized damage. Uh, the, uh, when the uh, impulse load uh, and the, the load intensity are increased. Um, as for the numerical investigation, uh, a new material conceived model is developed, uh, it's too suitable for ultra high performance fiber force concrete, and a practical uh, 3D finite element analysis approach is developed and validated for shock tube uh, testing and field blast testing with a model to test ratio of uh, 94%. Uh, also, a numerical design optimization study for performance-based design of ultra high performance fiber reinforced concrete blast protection panels are conducted, and the um, optimum design parameters from this study uh, for such panels uh, are, in terms of the shape, a panel should be a rectangular shape with a rectangularity ratio of 1.75. The thickness to surface area uh, ratio is um, should be between 0.04 to uh, 0.05. And the boundary condition should be um, all around and for uh, a good a good uh, balance between the uh, cost effectiveness and the performance would be having a boundary condition that is spot pinned at uh, uh, intervals. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Motadi, for being on time, actually. So uh, we are going to start with the first round of questions, starting with Dr. Youssef, please. Motadi, thank you for the great presentation. Yes, uh, you did a good amount of work, experimental and numerical. Uh, your writing needs to be polished a little bit to, to get uh, good things out of it. Actually, in your presentation, you did a better job than the writing in certain sections. So uh, I'll go to certain section, discuss it with you, and then we'll uh, speak from there. So in the introduction section, do you have your thesis? Uh, I do, yes. Uh, let me just pull it. So in the first paragraph in the introduction. Yeah. I'll just have to pull, uh, pull the thesis and uh, so. Okay, sir. Uh, um, 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 I, okay, uh, you are speaking about the practical challenges, uh, and you spoke about construction issues and the need for rapid construction. 
and other things. Yeah. Then the last statement in this, this paragraph says that ultra high performance concrete is the solution. And I didn't understand from your writing why you are saying it's the solution for those issues, uh, like maintenance costs, you didn't say. Okay. Uh, so you need to speak about why you are, you did mention it in your presentation now. Yeah. So in your presentation, you did a better job in this section, I can see. So you know the material, but you didn't write it as good as it should be. Uh, I'll ask you a quick question. Do you know what are the disadvantages for using ultra high performance concrete? Yes, sir. Uh, just let me pull the uh, presentation here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm just a second, as I prepared a slide for that actually. Uh, so I can share the screen again. And So, uh, well, the advantages would, disadvantages would be that for slimmer, uh, uh, well, ultra high performance fiber force concrete would um, ideally produce a slimmer and uh, smaller cross sections, but this would raise a challenge for slenderness ratio, for example, for axial uh, load bearing elements. Also, uh, a, a ready mix ultra high performance fiber force concrete cannot uh, yet be achieved. Uh, it has to be either mixed on site or a precast delivers at the precast members. Uh, there is a high energy um, uh, intake requirement uh, for um, and a special high uh, shear um, uh, a mixer is required to mix the material. Uh, also, uh, higher initial cost of the material than traditional concretes um, due to the high energy intake and the significant lack of competition in the market. Uh, also, the lack of design guidelines and standards. It's, it's a disadvantage somehow because people would not really uh, risk designing with the material that they there's no guidelines for. Usually, they try to you know, be on the, on the safe side, not taking uh, that kind of um, risk where there's no standards. Also, um, without uh, the fibers, uh, there is a high risk of shrinkage than traditional concrete. Uh, however, the fibers uh, would control the shrinkage to a good degree. Also, in terms of fire performance, I had, I've seen some controversial um, uh, um, data about that. But in, in general, there is a significant strength reduction after the uh, reaching 400 de uh, degree uh, Celsius. And uh, this actually uh, was one of the finding, findings of Dr. Hussein in 2013 with respect to ultra high performance fiber force group. That's a good summary. I can imagine that you had uh, access to my uh, reports to prepare this page. But uh, regarding the fire, uh, blast can be associated with fire, right? Sorry? Uh, a blast load can be associated with fire as well. Uh, yes, but it's, it's a small time interval. So the fire would not actually. The, the structure will be damaged structurally before the fire could take effect. So whatever happens in fire, that that's well, is an is like is an after 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 the uh, the event. So that's a good answer. So maybe you should highlight this in your thesis. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in your first chapter and in your presentation, you spoke about accelerated construction. Yes. And I don't believe your thesis did anything related to accelerated construction. It's a claim that you mentioned, but you didn't address it really. Okay, so I can clarify it now if you allow me. Sure. So um, my, my, the, the, the whole thesis is about a, a blast protection panel that is actually precast. So it's part of an accelerated construction to use precast panels. So cast on, on, on the shop and delivered uh, to the site. So that's, that's part of an accelerated uh, um, construction uh, technique. But whenever you have accelerated construction, precast panels, you have connections, and yes. you have other points to address, right? Yes, but uh, it's it's a little bit out of the scope. But for the other points, will be the support system, for example, which is I had access to the uh, 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 the uh, I believe the CPCA. They had uh, some uh, design guidelines for blast protection panels made of traditional concrete and stuff like that. And they had uh, uh, design examples for the supports and stuff like that, like steel supports and the connections. So these panels can 
with future researchers would investigate the the uh, you know, the effect of uh, or the let's say uh, how to adjust the design for these connections to the new uh, panels that we're proposing here. So maybe you can add uh, in the literature review section, you can add a section discussing the points that you mentioned now. Yeah. At least so you connect everything together. Yeah. yeah. And then you present that you what you are focusing on. So it's clear for the reader. Yes. Uh, can we go to figure 217? 217. So 217, and I'm trying to find it in my in my section also. So I believe it's in your presentation as well. It's a figure showing the blast environment. Yeah, uh, just a second, let me put this one here. Uh, blast environment, yeah, this one. Okay, and then this. So, okay, this one? Uh, the one on the left, yes. yes. So okay. for this figure and the other figure, so just, this is just a general comment. Yes. You did present uh, the figure, but you didn't discuss it enough. You didn't present enough discussion. So this figure, I can see in it some uh, minor cuts, uh, glass, uh, potentially uh, lethal injuries. I can see some other things, but those are presented in the figure and you never spoke about them in the text, okay. which should make it uh, hard to follow the thesis. Yeah. So in general, whenever you have a figure, you should discuss this figure in depth. You should provide, you should, I should follow the writing to understand the figure. Yeah. Uh, there is a Z value of 0.8 presented on this figure. Yeah. And I am not sure why Z of 0.8 is chosen at the start. Uh, I couldn't, I couldn't understand it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, actually uh, this is the, uh, uh, we call it the scaled uh, uh, distance. And uh, basically each of, each of these lines here uh, represent a different uh, scale distance. So, uh, Whatever damage is, is like is expected, whether from, for example, uh, if, if, if for example in this figure here we have uh, different types of uh, uh, um, let's say containers for the um, explosives or whatever, and uh, so from from a, a luggage to a, an automobile, a van or a truck, and then there's a stand of distance. So basically, uh, the same level of damage would expect expected from, for example, a uh, a, uh, a, a a luggage of 100 kilograms let's say of uh, uh sorry um around so it should be around like 15 or maybe yeah 15 uh, kilogram at 100 uh, meters distance uh, from a structure would cause the same amount of damage as having for example a van that is uh, almost around like uh 400 or I'm good with that point, Adi, but uh, to save time for my questions, uh, you have here on this figure the lowest line is defined in the legend as z equal 0.8, right? Yes, but oh, you mean, oh, yeah, yes. So, why why did they choose z equal 0.8? I have no idea. This is no, this is my oh, okay, I, I had to clarify this. Uh, uh yeah, uh, this is actually this was not in the in the original. Uh, that's why in the thesis I wrote that this was adapted from the uh, family report. This is the the z, z, z value that I used in my design, so it's be, it's below the be, below the uh, the uh, the most ex, like the extreme uh, z value that is uh, as, um, highlighted by the uh, the uh, federal uh, emergency management uh, administration. So this is a, a value that should should produce even higher damage than the uh, Z of 2.4. Good. Uh, did you write what you said now on the thesis? Uh, I'm, I'm not, um, I do not recall, but I, I might uh, have, have done so in the, uh, not in the, in the beginning where this one was first shown, but, but at the uh, numerical investigation part and design optimization, I believe I wrote a, a line or two. Yeah, you are speaking about chapter five or four, yes. right? So, yeah, so that's uh, way over there. Uh, 
the second point Z is introduced in this figure and the definition for it comes like after two pages or three pages in this thesis. So when I'm reading at this point, I have Z and I don't know what's Z. Oh. Okay. Okay. So this is, uh, those things are uh, important. I, I have a market copy of the thesis that I'll be emailing to Professor uh, Marzou yes, and uh, it has those comments on it. So don't, you don't have to get them now. I have the comments, uh, I'll email it, them to you. Mm -hmm. So if we go to the second chapter, uh, which is the concrete properties chapter. Okay. And the last couple of points uh, uh, about this chapter. Uh, in one of the section, you did choose uh, four points of strains, including 0 0.0035, 0 0.005, 0 0.013. Do you remember why did you choose those uh, values specifically? Uh, yeah, it, it's because of the, uh, uh, just let me pull the figure here. So th this one, right? Yes. Okay, uh, well, I should, uh, first of all, like, uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, it's it's about the apparent change in slope that I observed, uh, like it's a pattern uh, in the uh, usually in the specimen. So this is this marks the almost the elastic limit of the material in compression, and then um, at this um, between point two and three, or uh, actually a strain of point uh, zero zero three five and uh, zero zero five. Would be um, the, st uh, the, st the stiffness or the uh, the uh, um, some damage would start taking place, right? And so basically, I followed the apparent change in slope. So this is based on the experimental results, right? Yes. Yeah. How many experimental uh, tests did you use? Did well, you use to get those values? Well, I used the um, the, the two percent. Uh, so basically. I used this specific curve for that. So three and, samples? Uh, three samples, yeah. Uh, okay. So two questions here. Yes. What is the standard deviation associated with those uh, points? Like how much error is associated with those points if I use different graphs? And the second one, uh, do you believe three, three tests are enough to have a models that work for any sample? Well, um, actually, for this uh, specific uh, uh, testing program that was uh, conducted here at Ryerson, there were, uh, like, this is one of the mixes that were used, and this is the commercially available uh, ultra performance concrete, like ductile, uh, as they commercially marketed. Uh, but uh, there were also two, two other materials uh, with different strength and the, the curve followed the same uh, pattern, but I only presented here the uh, ones that I um, uh, applied for the ductile because that, that's the commercially available. The other one, the other two mixes were um, uh, developed at, at Trierson University. It's not commercially uh, marketed and the strength uh, was somehow below the, the standard of 150. Uh, so, okay. Yeah. So but if wonderful. we go back to the previous page, uh, which showing the equations. Yes, sir. So maybe a limitation to your research that it's limited to ductile, right? So if I use it in Europe, your model, I, it won't be valid. Uh, in because Europe? They don't have ductile. No, they have ductile in Europe. It's a French company, actually. So. Maybe. I'm yeah. not sure. If I use it in Japan, it won't be valid. So but, 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 uh, you need to specify that yeah. it's applicable only to ductile. Uh, yeah, with those yeah. problems. Somehow. Somehow. Uh, so you are defining youngest modulus of concrete here as 3750 times square root of FC prime. Yeah. I, I find this youngest modulus to be very low. For ultra high? Yes. Well, this is, I, I actually, I used the, uh, the uh, report by the Federal uh, uh, Highway Administration. It's a state of the art report. Uh, and uh, they, they they had the, the same equation, but for, uh, with uh, the uh, for normal concrete, what's the youngest modulus at the initial point for normal concrete? Would be around uh, 20, 20 to twenty five megapascals, uh, thousand megapascals. No, 